So welcome back all, this is Daz from Modero Techniques. So up this week, we're gonna look at all things internet and extending your internet into some sort of outbuilding. So what we're gonna use is the Ubiquiti M5 Loco. No, I didn't add that bit into it. Yes, the last part of it is of the brand is, or the model number is Loco. So in effect, what it is, it's a point-to-point -point wireless internet setup. So whether you're gonna, you wanna get your internet connection into an outbuilding, a guest house, a barn or a shed like my part of the world or your layout room, this video is for you. So you might be thinking, well, just do wireless. Sometimes some buildings act like a little like a Faraday cage and you can't get the wireless into it. So we'll show you how I'm doing this with my, my setup and how I get lightning fast internet. So without further ado, let's get started. Now before we dive into the setup, let's talk a little bit about why I'm using Ubiquiti M5 antenna and why I believe it's a great option for extending your internet to your layout room. So first of all, we're gonna look at long distance. So the M5 can cover a distance up to 15 kilometers. Uh, obviously a line of sight is required, I'm not saying you're gonna have a layout room 15 kilometers away, but it just shows you the power of these little guys and good value for money. High performance. Um, with, his, with its advanced technology, you get very, very little drop in bandwidth or internet speed, ensuring you have a reliable connection, even over long distances, as we talked about before. Um, reasonably cost-effective, cost so at time of videoing, these antennas are about 180 Australian dollars. Um, you do need two of them. You need uh, the base station and obviously the, the slave one, the, the other end on your outbuilding. Um, compared to the cost effectiveness running long ethernet cables or installing fiber optics um, use the m5 antenna is obviously more budget friendly and less back breaking if you're going to dig some sort of trench by back by by yourself reasonable ease of in, um, installation i won't show you the actual mounting so to speak they're reasonably straightforward i will link to a video below um, that of a young gentleman that did that that got me on my way. Scalability, if you want to do more than one, I'm pretty sure you can do up to five, six, seven of these off one one main antenna um, if you've got more than one outbuilding. And number six, um, in my part of the world, we've got sheds or that are colour bond, which is galvanised iron, colour galvanised iron. So if you ever tried getting a Wi-Fi signal into that. So you must, you're probably thinking that, why don't you just run a Wi-Fi extender? Um, that should be good enough. You just can't get these into these types of dwellings um, all that easy. So this is why this option's such a, a good one. PCB Way offers a variety of services ranging from PCB production and assembly to 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet fabrication and injection molding in a variety of materials. If you do not have the correct tools for the job, you can quickly upload your Gerber file for a PCB and press enter and get a quote in no time at all. This makes PCB Way a good option for your projects. We'll talk about the equipment that's that's required. So up on the screen there is the, the two antennas. You can get them in a two antenna pack. pack. This is the newer version compared to what I've got, but the same model. So the uh, so you, up on the screen there at the top there, the two Ubiquiti M5 uh, Loco antennas. Now the power over Ethernet, which is important. So these are these little black boxes on the bottom left of the screen. Then you've got your, your, your pole mounts. That, that's how you fix it to the pole. And I'll show you a few options very, very shortly. And obviously the power plug. So you do need some sort of... In my part of the world, 240 volts or 120 volts um, for the from American friends out there to to power these up. Obviously, you're going to need some Ethernet cables to go from your what we'll call your your bridge and your main computer to the connections on the antenna here, and then through to and then on on the slave side or your layout side 
going through to some sort of other router so it uh, or computer so it accesses the internet so what we'll do we'll just quickly touch on the mounting systems very very quickly now you saw up on the screen there the way i mounted it so there's various different options so here's another one we're looking at here that's a bit of a longer mount system that uh, attaches to the wall anchors to the wall um Obviously, mine goes into corrugated iron, but if you've got brick structure, wood structure, um, you just got to choose the correct mounting uh, mounting hardware, so the screws and the like. Now, there are various now there are various other options to go for, and this is obviously on Amazon. So these are more more similar to the ones that I've got on the wall, and you can see one very similar to there, and that was sort of good enough for me. I didn't really need a very long option to um, up, come up above uh, gutters or the like. So choose, choose your mount wisely. We won't go into exactly how I fasten this though. So this is a very, very basic way of connecting all this up. So we'll start at the left-hand side here and we're gonna call that the, the house side of things. So I've got the antenna, the Wi-Fi between the two, which is the bridge. Now, as you can see that, as I, as I quoted before, up to 15 kilometers or 9.3 miles for our metric friends out there um, um, line connections here we've got just quickly bring up another photo here now what you can see you can see on the right hand side that's the bottom of the antenna so we've got the main and the secondary so the main data cable goes straight through to the to the antenna goes on goes into the poe section of the poe switch and then the land side then goes across to what i'm going to call to to your to your network switch or your your wi-fi router so that's then what gets connected to your computers internally with either within the train environment or your house environment where your internet sits so the first thing we need to do is connect up some sort of computer to the antenna so in the previous segment we looked at the antenna being plugged into some sort of network switch so it's always best to do it from from my experience doing it for a wired computer not doing it in wi-fi um, you just it's just less fault finding if there's any issues so then what you need to do is access um, a web interface whether it's google or microsoft's version and then open up the web browser and type in 192.168.20 so that each antenna is dot 20 you will remember you will remember we looked at i would change it to probably the, the two antennas need to be a different address so you could probably leave one on dot 20 and one maybe on dot 21 unless you've got other entities within your your network that's already got that ip address so then you got to look at logging in all right so once you've got the the entity in um ending in dot 20 so 192.168.1.20 you're going to come to this logon page now i've already set all mine up so the username's got a ubnt and the password's going to be ubnt so i will show you the, the the point where you need to change that later on it's important that you do so okay so once you're in you come to this main this this first page which is called the main tab so you got all your tabs across the top here main wireless network advanced services and system looks all rather daunting at this point in time yours won't have any activity here because you're only going to be plugging in so mine's actually connected through and um, this is one of the ways we can check check on throughput through to the other antennas in my system so just disregard these monitors at this point in time so the first thing we need to do is go to the wireless tab and under the mode here we're going to set it to access point set your ssid to whatever you want to set it to so that's what it's going to be able to see i've got mine you, you to actually be hidden um for obvious reasons and then you go through to your security settings so i've got mine a little bit differently i've got mine set as wpa2 aes there's various options i've just gone for the high security and authentication of psk i won't go into what they're all about at this point in time and then what your code or your security code is so at this point in time what we will do is once you got you got that you need to then don't worry about any other the, any of these other settings you don't really need to worry about those i've just left them as default settings at this point in time so at this point in time you need to then go and push the change button which i won't do because um i've already set up mine i don't want to lose any of my settings and then we go back 
and once the change button's done you'll see it and then you can push refresh and you'll you'll see everything here so that's for the first so sorry one thing i probably should point out one of the first things also what we need to do is it was pointed out so in the systems tab you can go and name your device so it's actually quite important so you know which one's what so this is the house m5 i'm calling it and this is where you go and change all your administrator side of things so the big one is make sure both your antennas have got the same firmware if they don't have the same firmware the best thing for you to do is go and you you download it down here and then then you upload it and you'll just ask you to go and choose choose the file and you and you download it look at the other antenna which is exactly the same process and then do it the same and then we'll do a reboot but sure i won't do a reboot now because i don't want to do that on this system because mine's already set up so so this is antenna number one the house antenna so let's make sure there's no other sections so the network we've got it in bridged mode and if you wish to and i won't i won't sort of go into why my ip address is a little bit differently um, it's depending on how your your house is set up and the like but just leave the rest of these so the the primary dns the secondary and go from there so just um so we'll just quickly go through we want to we want a static because we don't want this to keep changing because we need to be able to what they call ping the antenna if we need to be which is what we're effectively doing here just the uh, the subnet mask is as is 255.255.255.0 the gateway for you will be 192.168. I'll just get this correct address. Dot one dot twenty for this one, and just leave all these other settings the same. Let's quickly just go and have a look in the advanced tab. None of that I need to do. So you can actually change the brightness of LEDs here. So the, the LEDs are on the back of the antenna. It shows you how good your, your signal is. And I didn't change anything on that side of things regarding any of these, these settings, uh, the port numbers and all that. I didn't need to do that. And that's all good. So at this that point in time, each time if you're going to change something, just be remember, just remember to push this change button down the bottom here. That's probably the, the most important thing. So what we're now going to do, we're going to bring up a fresh browser. And we're now going to show you the settings of one of the other antennas on my system. So let's go to the one in my train shed. And this is what it's going to look like so your your protection your connection is not private so that's just because you don't have a my understanding um a valid um certificate in it as this point in time but i've never had any issues so it's just a matter of making sure you go into the correct all right so this is my secondary i've got three of these antennas on my system for various um applications so this is the the main page for it so as you can see it's already set up now same again we go over to the wireless tab as i said always do this on on the same uh on the same land to start with just makes the things a lot easier so now the difference with this one is so before we had an access point now we want stations so access point is the the main which I'm going to call the house, which is the main antenna, and all the other slaves that connect to it or access to it are all called stations. Then it's just a matter of going and make sure you, you do the same Wi-Fi uh, or the way, same setting as before. If you do change anything there, yes, you go and push the change button. Now, on this on this page here for the network, we do change things, so it's still static, but then we got to change it to the the only thing we need to change is the next to the next address so the last one was 192.168.2.20 this one we will change to it doesn't need to be sequential you can put it in anything else it just needs to be different than 20 so at this point we'll say uh, dot dot 11 
go and change that, leave all the rest the same as it was before, go and push the change button. And I think that's pretty well it from memory. And one other thing, one other test you can do is what they call a command prompt or ping, pinging something. So um, I won't go into the science behind it, but it just gives you another way to know that your system's working correctly. So it's just a matter of going PIN space and then what, just pick one of the aerials that um, addresses you did before. And if it's working, it should just do this, should ping a few times. So we've got a few milliseconds here, which is pretty good um, success rate and it pings three or four times. So if you haven't got it right or you put in the wrong, put in the wrong IP address, It'll just sit here like this. You can see request timed out. That means you you haven't have you don't have a successful connection to that particular device. So now we're all up and running. I'll show you a very very quick test. Um, basically speedtest.net. So it's just a matter of go. It'll do its thing, and I'll show you what type of speeds that I'm getting through the wireless network over to my outbuilding. So ping in milliseconds is probably a little bit high at 30 milliseconds, but mind you, this is a Starlink, so you always are going to get a bit higher um, ping in milliseconds. And that's pretty good for me out here um, in my part of the world, 18, 264 download and between 17 and 18 upload. So there you have it. You've successfully extended your, your internet connection using the Ubiquiti M5 Loco antenna to from your main dwelling to your out outhouse so to speak. So not only does not only does it enhance your internet speed over in your layout room if that's what you're doing we can also add other little features to it like CCTV and other security type features to keep all your models safe from prying eyes and burglars and thieves, so to speak. As always, three questions. So question number one. So first question is, would you use something similar to this if you are if you're in currently building an outbuilding or some sort of layout room that's detached from the main part of your from your dwelling? Number two. If so, what sort of hardware are you using? If not, have you taken the time and the effort and the money to dig a trench under the ground and put a conduit in with some sort of data cable or optic fiber, if that's, uh, if that's what you're doing? And number three, as always, if there's any glaring errors, please let me know and I'll try to right my wrongs. So if I'd like to point you to my, either my buy me a coffee or buy a Patreon page, so obviously, Every little bit helps to towards the funding a, a, um, a channel such as this, whether it's new cameras, camera gear, internet connections, and, and the like. Just the, the list goes on. So also a big shout out to all the people who have reached out to me of recent times and bought me a coffee that it really is appreciated. So thank you for that. So that's the end of the video. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Make sure you subscribe. Click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon. Like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Technique.